So today I'm going to try and present uh, the paper What Can Learned Intrinsic Reward Capture? Work done by Zhe Yu Zheng, uh, Jungkook Oh, and uh, others, uh, DeepMind. And uh, on a high level, this paper tries to learn a reward function uh, for, the, for, for the agent to learn with um, to optimize an extrinsic reward function. Um, so in reinforcement learning is often the case that we like um, we always given the reward function together with the environment and we try to optimize uh, for it right and that's called the, the extrinsic reward so this is what uh, is fixed and we want to optimize for right but it's often the case that we that we find uh, some other rewards um, like uh, we can specify other kind of rewards that are can help us in learn uh, for that extrinsic reward more quickly I'll give you an example uh, is one of the experiments that they, they, they do in the paper is this key box thing. So this is a very simple grid environment where like the agent is this blue dot, I believe, and it has to collect uh, the key first. And then um, once he has a key, he can open one of the boxes and different rewards are going to be associated with different, uh, with, with, with different boxes, right? And so he has to go first and collect the key and it cannot just go to the box, right? And the reward, the extensive reward is only given once he, he collects the box or opens the box. But um, I could associate, I could, as a designer, since I know how the, the, the game works, I could go and tweak a little bit the reward and put a little reward for collecting the, the key. In that way, I'm going to like drastically accelerate the, um, the learning of the agent, right? So this is a way in which we could design a reward. In, in, so this, this will be an intrinsic reward as opposed to extrinsic reward of only the one only from, it comes from opening the box or only from the environment, okay? So there's like a different kinds of uh, reward. This is like also called reward engineering. Like as a designer, you're going and tweaking the reward, um, making more efficient for, or making it easier for the agent to learn quicker. And there's different kind of reward engineering. There's like this um, very low, like a task specific reward engineering. Like you, I give you a specific reward for collecting the key or, or any other thing. And then there is like a task independent or task, uh, yeah, task independent reward engineering that, that could be like um, uh, something that incentivizes exploration by counting how many times I've been to different uh, states here and telling me, okay, please go, like I give you a bonus for visiting states that I haven't been visited yet. For, so a reward is uh, propor inversely proportional to the times that you've been uh, to, to some state. So, or like um, some kind of uh, predict predicting the future and, um, according to how well you predict the future or your agent should be good at predicting the future. And in doing so, you understand better the environment and, in, and when you understand, once you understand the environment, you can um, better um, perform at, at, at the task. And there's a bunch of like, there's a lot of work that goes into this kind of uh, reward engineering. So what is going to, what people in this paper uh, tried is to learn this whole reward engineering to automate their reward engineering, to make it completely, completely, um, automated so and that includes like this trade-off between like exploration and, and um, exploitation so exploring as i said with these bonuses and then like once you find it like uh, stick with uh stick with uh, with the, the highest reward that you found so far or, or something like that right and um <clears throat> so in this in this case they're going to try to learn this whole thing right and uh <clears throat> The way they're going to do it is by having this uh, intrinsic reward. The department tries this intrinsic reward, uh, calling it EDA. And EDA is going to be, um, so they're going to be the param parameters of a, a network. In this case, an um, LSTM, I believe, or another recurring neural network uh, uh, thing. And uh, that EDA is going to be, the, is going to give the, the intrinsic reward for each uh, of the, of, of each of the steps in the, for, for, for an agent. And uh, what is kind of uh, interesting about this paper, or what the, um, the approach that they take is like that they consider lives uh, or like um, expected return uh, across lifetimes. So they consider for each agent is a lifetime, which is all the, uh, all the training of the agent. We like, they fix an amount of updates that the agent can take, say uh, a thousand updates or something like that. And they take, uh, and they can take uh, any number of episodes, like so this many episodes, there's a task distribution, so there's different variation of the same task or something like that. So it could be, in that case, I don't know, like the key is, is placed in different, in, so in this experiment here, could be the, the key is placed in different places or 
or something like that, or the or the position of the box is something is something different every every time. So there's a specific task this task distribution that we draw from the distribution. At each life for each lifetime, the task is going to be different, and um, and but the only thing that's not going to change in, at the beginning of each lifetime, the um, the the parameters of the policy are going to be like uh, reinitialized. They're going to be randomly reinitialized. So theta is zero, and they really reinitialize for each lifetime. And the only thing that is um, uh, kind of maintained across many many lifetimes is the intrinsic reward eta. So eta is what parameterizes the uh, intrinsic reward function. Okay. And um, <clears throat> and what is important to notice here is that uh, so here they have a, a bunch of episodes. They have the normal like um, the normal reward, um, blah blah blah, uh, <laughs> policy. Um, all that normal stuff. They have the discount sum of return uh, for the episode, and uh, what is new is they have the discount sum of return across the whole life. So uh, the same concept of discounting the rewards, but not only across the episode, but across the whole life. And then like they have uh, this new intrinsic reward. So the yeah the reward this um, the returns can be calculated with um, using the normal rewards or the extrinsic rewards both. Okay, and uh, which is, I said that uh, eta parameterizes a uh, recurring neural network, which is pretty important because if we're gonna do stuff like um, so, learning a reward or something before you go to the box, you wanna uh, collect the key first, right? Or you want to like uh, keep account of where you've been and where you have been not where you didn't go, so that you can give bonuses for exploration and, and so forth. That in, that that kind of implies that you're gonna have a recurring neural network to keep a Keep counting, or to uh, because the sequence in which you do something is important, right? You have to collect the key first, and then go to the, to, to the box, or you have to know that you've been to all these places before, and keep account of how many times you've been there. So you need a recurring neural network to do that. So that's why they use a recurring neural network. And um, and going to the meat of the of the paper is like um, what they're trying to achieve. Uh, is like learning the parameters of the intrinsic reward such that the resulting rewards achieve a learning dynamic for the RL agent that maximizes lifetime extrinsic return on tasks drawn from this from some distribution, right? So they try to update the so they're trying to change eta so that the resulting dynamics um, so that uh, resulting uh, rewards achieve learning that achieve learning dynamics for the RL agent. That maximize life and extremes return. So this uh, learning dynamic is important because you can see it here. Like uh, EDA uh, determines what update, because like what update gets made depends on on the reward, right? And EDA determines the reward. So the the update, so what what the value of theta one is um, after like randomly initializing depends on theta. So each step, what uh, update is is uh, is going to be taken or is going to be uh, done. Uh, to the a, to to the policy network is going to depend on, on eta as well, and we're going to optimize it so that um, across the whole episode, uh, for some distribution of tasks across the whole lifetime, sorry, the the the, the extensor reward is going to maximize, and um, so getting into the into the into the algorithm itself. So you can see here that it draws some task distribution. So they draw from some task. They randomly initialize um, the, the agent. So for each lifetime, they randomly initialize the agent and they um, they also draw some task. So they initialize, yeah, they initialize um, some task uh, and some policy, right? And uh, <clears throat> So this is the distribution over policy. They initialize the distribution over policy, and here to draw a specific initialized policy um, and a specific task. And then they they start uh, for this is like, like a lifetime. They generate a normally like episodes as you, as you would normally do for a or a personal learning algorithm. They do the update of the poli of the policy of the of the parameters of the policy using the intrinsic reward here. And then, like, uh, they do an update. So every n steps, they do an update of eta 
using um, of, of, of um, so eta that parameterizes the intrinsic reward. So they learn a better intrinsic reward using equation four, and equation four is is this one. So basically what they're doing here is they're using the, ch the chain rule because they know how basically, so G life, what is important is that G life is this thing, right? Is all the extrinsic reward across the whole life, right? The um, discounted sum of returns um, across the whole life. And they know how, this is the normal um, policy update, and they know how how those reward like um, uh, these returns depend on the on the parameters theta of the policy, right? Um, in a certain way, using the log probability of the policy multiplied by the by the returns, or it could be advantage, or it could be anything here. And uh, but they also know how the um, how different like how the update depends. So how theta what is the gradient of theta with respect to um, the eta, so the parameters of the um, the reward network, because uh, this one depend on. Um, as you can see here, let me look. So here we can see that um, the update rule itself of theta depends on the previous value of theta, uh, theta t minus one and eta, right? So there's a, definitely a gradient of um, of theta with respect to eta, right? And by using the train rule, they can um, they can ca calculate what is the so this is the cost of over the whole lifetime, right? And uh, they can ca calculate how this like the gradient of the cost over the whole lifetime uh, with respect to the par the parameters that parameterize the intrinsic reward function eta. So this is a recurrent neural network, right? And because this over the whole lifetime here we're talking about like I don't know it could be ten thousand uh, updates because this uh, or thousands of updates or even more because like this task that we're gonna see in this paper are pretty easy and this is a kind of a proof of concept paper uh, but if you think about using this that could be very useful in much more um, much more much harder much more computationally um, expensive environments uh, that need much like a longer lifetime to uh, um, learn anything useful then you're gonna deal with like millions of uh, of steps and, and stuff like that so it's important that you can truncate and you can don't have to back prop or propagate through all the lifetime and you can do it inside over like a um a portion of it by using a value function which um which is over the lifetime uh, so the sequence of so the expected returns of the whole lifetime. You can use the same principle for learning a, a value function um, over episodes, right? Which gives you a, a specific state in the episode. It gives you the expected sum of returns uh, by following the policy from that state onwards, right? You can do the same thing, but for the whole life life instead of uh, uh, only for the episode, and in in that way you can truncate uh, the, the the reward. The sum of rewards, uh, this kind of sum of re reward, and uh, you can be more efficient. You don't need to propagate through the whole lifetime, right? So they also use this uh, value function um, parameterized by phi, which they update here together, like um, yeah, in the algorithm uh, after update after updating eta. Um, and note that uh, so as we noted here before, uh, eta, I guess also phi, then it. Is the only thing that never gets uh, reset uh, each lifetime. So it's the only thing that, it, that, that, that stays the same across the whole, um, across many lifetimes. And um, now moving to the to the investigations, they uh, or to the experiments, they have different uh, different uh, experiments. They have these like uh, key boxes experiment that I explained before. They have this experiment, empty room experiment, where they, there's like one goal. They get initialized in each lifetime, and the agent is the blue dot again, and has to reach that um, location, that goal that is invisible to it. So it to, to the agent, so he has to like look for it, and it's gonna get the reward only once he get to the to the goal. And um, and each lifetime is reinitialized, so it is more to um, kind of um, gauge or measure how well the agent um, explores, I guess. 
And here is um, this ABC task is like this ABC location. They're associated each with uh, some reward, like um, that is drawn from this from distribution distribution. So I don't know, two of them are going to have a positive reward or a negative reward or something like that, and the other one is that doesn't. Or but each time it like each in each lifetime it changes. Um, so the agent has to figure out which one is which, right? And as it changes. And, uh, but across what's gonna stay st you know, stable across all lifetimes is that it's always the same locations, I guess, right? And um, so yes, and they compare against um, some, uh, so extrinsic, only extrinsic rewards, so I'll only optimize it with, uh, with respect to the extrinsic reward uh, for each episode or for the whole entire life, li lifetime, right? So by just not resetting or not having this, uh, yeah, not resetting uh, from lifetime to the, uh, to, to the next, so like not only optimize it for the for the extrinsic reward within the uh, episode, but across the whole lifetime or across the only episode, so life and episode and life, and then they have count based, which is like um, yeah, keeping keeping um, keeping account where you've been and where you haven't been to incentivize exploration, or they have also kind of exploration curiosity based exploration. Where the, there's a the sensory reward comes from, so sorry the the curiosity, the the, the agent has both access to a, a sensory reward and also curiosity reward that comes from like an inverse dynamic model of maybe being able to um, so predict the future and how much what is this discrepancy between the, the what is the error that the, that the, a model has in predicting the future that is the kind of a tells you whether you've been to a place or not. So that gives you an incentive for exploration. So these are like the, um, the things that are benchmarking against uh, on these three tasks. And um, and you can see that it performs b better than those on, well, these two tasks in, in all of them. Uh, they don't perform pretty well. Uh, like the, it outperforms all the, the other like uh, methods on these three tasks. Granted, none of these methods are meta learning by themselves. So this, so this one, the blue curve, this work is the only one that kind of transfer information from one um, from one episode to, from li one lifetime to the next. So there's more information kind of transfer. But the other have some advantage because of course they have some uh, kind of um, uh, biases or have some kind of um, some yeah s s some some dynamics that are given to them. Like so, for instance, they have already access to the count. We already given the count to them or they have all this like kind of um, system or architecture in place already, right? So you, you might argue that they also have the advantage. In the and what is interesting here is like the, um, the how the agent explore. So for different um, for different methods, so the intrinsic is this is this method presenting this work, and uh, you can see here that for these two examples, one where the agent is always in the same place, and one in which the goal is which the agent doesn't see is very far away and the other one is is close by and in the one which is where is far away the agent has to like kind of um, the, int the intrinsic reward is giving uh, a reward for exploring presumably and then once you reach it it's always going going there right so th these are the fr frequency with which the agent um, uh, visits each of the states i presume and uh, and obviously it like uh, visits more of the state uh, around where it's initialized, but it always also gets to the, to the goal, and then it should start like uh, once it finds where the goal is, it should go there more and more, right? Whereas when the goal is nearby, it always also go, only go there, there, goes there, and then it stays there, like keeps going there, it doesn't explore at all. So it once it finds it, it can switch from the exploration to the exploitation phase pretty quickly. Uh, whereas like this count and um, this count based or this like curiosity or this other method that gives an explicit uh, incentive for exploring either by count by count is like um, the counting the, the state frequency or by by but this inverse dynamic model um, they because they always give a, a bonus they they never switch so they're always an exploration phase right so th they, they don't switch and, and therefore they're not as efficient as this one. Um, in this other task where like the, um, the agent learns to kind of probe 
which one is with which. So like first it, it like uh, which one gives the highest reward. So since the location always is the same, it's gonna say, okay, I go to A, and if A, um, if I went to A, then the, re the next step, the reward for going to A is very, very, is negative, right? Because I don't want to go there twice at the beginning, even though, even if there is a positive reward. And uh, it said it's gonna, it's gonna give it a reward for giving, give, going to the other two. And once it has to figure out which one is the, the one that with the highest reward, it's gonna give, um, yeah, it's gonna keep going there, right? And here, the last example is going to learn across many, many different lifetimes that it has to give a, a positive bonus, a positive reward bonus, intrinsic reward, to collecting the key, and uh, and then going to the to, to the boxes, which is um, yeah, we, we basically learns an intrinsic reward for collecting the key, because otherwise, if it didn't know each time what it, what the key m meant, uh, or that you have to have the key to have access to any of the boxes. The, the the combination um, of all possible states that you have to explore is 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 enormous, right? So, isn't feasible within a lifetime to explore that the state, the, the safe space, to find out the, the fact that like uh, by having the key and then going to the box, um, you might do well. Whereas if you learn that across many many different lifetimes, since the, the knowledge gets passed to from life one lifetime to the next by the intrinsic reward by learning these EDA parameters, then um, yeah, you learn this reward by that tells you first go take the key and then go to the boxes. And then they also um, they also compared this method to some um, no sorry not here. Here. They also compared this method to some meta learning um, algorithm like MAML and uh, RL squared, which is also very similar to learning to reinforce and learn, like the other paper. And uh, this paper is pretty similar um, to what they're doing over here, only that here they're making it like the, the kind of learning separately the reward function and the agent across 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 uh, um, met a lifetime, right? So like they have an agent which is not uh, doesn't doesn't see, doesn't go from one lifetime to the next. And um, but here there's no like there's no concept of learning an intrinsic reward. There's only like one policy, but it never gets reset from one episode to the next. So it can kind of also figure out to explore more or like he has access to the to the. It could, it could do also something like counting the states where it has been, and then like keeping a, a track of the reward, where the rewards were, and then like after it explore all, all the states, uh, going only to the like start the exploitation. Um, Kind of phase and only going to the, the states that have the highest reward. So that kind of thing that we talk about, this one can also do basically, but doesn't make this um, doesn't separate doesn't separate uh, two different networks. One for the intrinsic reward, the other one for the policy, right? And uh, so, and this one, this one, um, this one once it learned the the the, the uh, once it's learned, it can change by only. If, by only relying on this LSTM, so this is a recurrent network yeah, uh, that the policy is parameterized uh, by. Whereas MAML still has to do some gradient updates to adapt to a new thing, right? So like this one can only adapt by just uh, like kind of testing things and then picking the one that is that is best with, without doing any update of the of the network. Everything is done within the LSTM. It's just probing things out and going to the places that like each, each new you can adapt to a new situation without doing any update, I guess what I'm trying to do, say. And then this one has to do some updates though. But like the, the principle is that it's gonna do some updates quicker than otherwise it would otherwise have done. And um, so it, you can see that this, so the orange is RL um, square, it performs better than the these methods here. But because it's um, one of the points they make, because they separate the policy and the reward. They can at a certain point they, they can go and change what the, the interface between the environment and the policy is, and change permute basically the the actions of the um, of the agent. So now different action mean different thing to the in the environment, and because uh, this method here like uh, separated the reward, the reward is going to st still be okay, and uh, and and, uh, and the only thing that the that uh, the agent has to do is relearn the policy, basically, right? Whereas in the other 
thing where the in the other um, approach are all squared, where like um, these two things are kind of mixed up, the reward learning and the policy learning, it has trouble when we, you permute the action. So that's the only thing that um, that, that changes. And uh, uh, that I mean, that's the only thing in which this method here is better. Another thing is like they, they test this in um, in non-stationary, which it, which means within the same lifetime is non-stationary. Uh, so like for instance, the ABC task, they're gonna change what the, they're gonna change, what is the ABC task? Okay, they're gonna change within the same lifetime what the rewards for each one of these are. And so you can see in this um, kind of, um, you can see how the reward the reward, um, the intrinsic reward, gives, um, prepares the, the policy for this, um, for the change, basically from one to the, from one kind of reward um, structure to the next. By, since he knows when the app, when, when the change is gonna uh, happen, it gives, like, uh, it starts giving um, rewards that are not matched to the extrinsic re reward, telling me to explore more. Right, so at the beginning is exploit, 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 exploit. So at the beginning is going to be explored, then exploit, 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 and then once you reach near the the area or the moment where you're going to, you know that the, you know that there's going to be a change in the distribution over the, uh, in, the in in the rewards, it's going to be more explorative there. It's going to change like trying more things. So the the, um, I believe what I, the measure here is entropy is going to go, um, yeah, go up. And then they they go back to uh, exploring basically. So yeah, that will be my my explanation or view of this paper. Pretty interesting paper. Uh, very like kind of proof of concept. I, I would say like they have this interesting concept, but the concept is really really interesting. I would say uh, this meta learning uh, auto automating this uh, reward engineering is very very interesting. Only like this are very easy reward, but it's very promising. I think. So thank you for watching. And um, bye.